The former prosecutor on the case declined to comment, and Rice's original defense attorney, she died back in 2019. Now, some people might see parallels between this case and the story that we told you about earlier today about Adnan Syed. CNN anchor Jake Tapper and his father. First time a father son do. <laughs> I like it. Dr. Ted Tapper join us both at the table. Welcome to you both. First, Thank you so much. First, guys, Jake, kudos to the article in the Atlantic. It's very long, but it's such a good read. And I found just jaw-dropping after jaw-dropping, jaw-dropping moment after one after another. You say that it's not up for you want readers to decide mm -hmm. about this case, but you said what happened after the case is not open for argument. What do you mean by that? Well, People, my dad and I have our opinions about whether or not CJ could have physically done this, and he'll talk about that in a second. But the idea that he had legal representation worthy of the name, there's no dispute about that. He did not. His lawyer was incompetent. His lawyer failed to visit the crime scene. His lawyer failed to bring up basic facts about the case in trial, such as the fact that the only evidence against CJ was this one witness, this one uh, victim of the shooting, who the night before, several times, your testimony. Yeah. several times she said she had no idea who shot her, no idea. Then overnight, the police say they got a confidential informant tip. Those detectives investigating the case go to see her uh, with a photo lineup. All of a sudden, she says it's, it's CJ who did it. That's weak. Mm -hmm. I mean, for that to be the only testimony against him, that's weak. And nobody in, and no police force would charge any of us if that was the only evidence against. But here's a poor kid with an incompetent attorney who didn't even know to bring that up. Uh, a poor black kid. I mean, poor black kid. a story, unfortunately, Absolutely. we've heard many, many times. And Dr. Tapper, you say physically, can you just show us briefly how he was walking, why you, you, you're convinced that there's no way he could have done this, because why? And CJ was 17 right. at the time. 17 at the time. He was a strong, healthy 17-year-old from South Philly. Yeah. And when I saw him in my office about five days before the event, yeah. he had a lot of pain getting from a sitting chair up to the exam table, and when the exam was done, the same thing in reverse, getting off the exam table, back to the chair. And when he left our now, exam... there's an edge there. I don't want you to fall yeah, off the set. Yeah. But I just want to show how, when how badly he When he left the exam room, he was walking like this. Hunched remember, over. he'd been shot up. He had more than 30 staples in his, mm. in his, in his torso wow. and a fractured yeah. pelvis. And this then, is a healthy 17-year-old, and that's how he was walking. So and was witnesses so say the pain. shooters yeah. ran off. Sprinting Sprinted. away. Sprinting yeah. away. Yeah. 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 So physically... So we, 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 so Rice is now serving 30 to 60 years uh, for attempted, attempted murder. murder. Attempted yeah. murder. Yeah. The, the Philadelphia DA's office has a conviction integrity unit. We reached out to them for a statement, and they told us in part uh, that they are not reviewing the case at this time, not because the conviction was sound, they say, but a determination at this time that there is insufficient legal and factual basis to warrant the Commonwealth intervene, intervening to vacate the conviction. So they're not saying it was all good. They're saying we just don't have enough yet to go and argue it. Why wasn't the shuffling and the pelvis injury and the inability of him to sprint away more central to the defense? Mm. There's probably two reasons for that. One is some of the evidence that we now know wasn't a, people weren't aware of at the time in 2011 when this event occurred in 2013, almost a year and a half later, when the trial finally occurred. Because she hadn't requested the medical records yes. from the hospital. Yeah. Right. Unbeknownst to everybody at the time, she was going through bankruptcy proceedings, taking on too many cases, not prioritizing this one. Is that the theory? Well, she didn't even get the medical records that showed that CJ had a fractured pelvis. You right. can't sprint if you have yeah. a fractured so pelvis. So, guys, why is he still in jail today? This is, this is what just made my blood boil, guys. Because why is he still in jail today? That's the way the legal system operates. It protects itself, right? And once you see it, you can't unsee it. The, the way to, in Pennsylvania to appeal the case to say, the, ver the first step, it's called PCRA, to appeal it and say this wasn't a fair case, you go to the judge that presided over the case. Yeah. How many judges are going to say, yeah, you're right, we, I did a really crappy job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, then the system protects itself. It goes to the next case, the next level, the Supreme Court. Judges protect judges. Right now, honestly, it's in the hands of Larry Krasner, uh, the DA, who has this conviction integrity unit, although he really only takes on cases where there is foolproof evidence that this was a wrongful conviction, not, look, we don't think he could have done it, and he yeah. had a horrible lawyer. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, or it's up to uh, the governor of Pennsylvania or the people on the parole board, which include Fetterman and Shapiro. And, Jake, you is talk it? about this flawed system yeah. and the empty promise of the Sixth Amendment. Yeah, right to, right to legal counsel. What needs to be done? I know it's a very loaded question, yeah. but what needs to be done? We have a system that 
again, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah. We have a two-tiered system of justice where people like us are able to get good representation and people who don't have means mm -hmm. are not. Right. Um, public defenders are usually pretty good, but they only see about 20% of the cases of people mm. that can't afford it. Court-appointed attorneys are about 80% of those cases, and they have a far worse track record. If we actually are committed to criminal justice and the Sixth Amendment worthy of the name of, of standing for legal representation, we actually need to invest to make sure that people have a right to a good yeah, proper counsel. Counsel. investment on the court appointed side or just we need more public defenders who are career people who are dedicating their lives to that work it, it just needs to be rethought because right now it's it's failing and yeah. this is just one case what's interesting about cj's case we have only listened. that you two are connected only that you're connected to it so yeah. we're learning so much thank you tapper as a community we're gonna get to shut us off thank you bringing dad to work today oh yeah take thank your you dad very to work much. Today. thank yeah. you sir.